This is a short video on second order equations. So what are we looking at here? The uh, main object that we're going to study is something like ax double prime plus bx prime plus cx equals zero. So I want to know functions x such that when I take some constant a times the second derivative of x plus some constant b times the first derivative of x plus some constant c times x itself, it should add up to zero. Now, what do some of these words mean? Second order, that just means x double prime is the highest derivative that you see. There's another word that you might see, which is called homogeneous. And what that means is that everything is just equal to zero. So we'll look at the non-homogeneous case later on. But uh, something that you'll see going forward is that always solving the homogeneous uh, related equation is, well, I guess maybe it doesn't make sense to say that right now. So just know that this is called homogeneous. And I'll tell you about non-homogeneous ones later. All right, so this second order differential equation is the same or it's equivalent to the system of two smaller first order equations, x prime equals y, y prime equals minus c over a times x minus b over a times y. And what we got pretty good at doing was taking this system and translating it or rewriting it in matrix notation, which is this over here. And if you look at that, I know how to solve that already. Like we just spent like three weeks doing that. Well, maybe not that long. Um, what do I do? I'm supposed to find the determinant of lambda i minus a and just find the eigenvalues for that matrix. So solve the determinant lambda i minus a equals zero. So kind of big picture right now. What am I saying to do? Well, what do I mean by these two things are equivalent? What do I mean by this matrix equation or this system is equivalent to this? That means that I already kind of know what the answers to the one in red should look like. In other words, what I'm telling you about with these second order equations, so far it's really nothing new. It's just a different perspective on how do we solve these systems of equations. So we'll get the same answers at the end. All right, so anyway, back into this math stuff here. What we, we're going to do is we're going to pretend like, oh, how do I solve this thing here? And so what we know we do is we take the determinant lambda i minus a, set it equal to zero. So if I actually do that, here's what lambda i minus a looks like. By the way, what do I mean by a? You probably guessed, but I'm calling this matrix A, like capital A. So here's lambda i minus A. Put them together and you get this. I'm switching to the bar notation for the determinant. When you do that though, you should get lambda squared minus b over a lambda plus c over a equals zero. Why don't you just multiply everything through by A? Like I don't wanna look at those fractions, that's gross. So you get A lambda squared plus B lambda plus C equals zero. And you're like, hey, wait a minute. That looks like super familiar. Didn't I see that like up here? Doesn't that look the exact same? And uh, yeah, you're right. Maybe what's different? Well, instead of x's, I got lambdas. Instead of a bunch of primes everywhere, I got actual exponents down below. So what am I trying to say to you? This thing here, if you pretend that's a legit quadratic equation and not some crazy differential equation, that's telling you what the eigenvalues are of the system already. In other words, the solution to that quadratic will just spit out what the eigenvalues are. That's pretty cool. Why should you be happy about that? Maybe you remember from all this matrix stuff that we did, you know, to solve that system, it really came down to finding the eigenvalues and then a little bit more work for finding the eigenvectors, unless like you're using symbol lab, in which case it's not too much more work. Anyway though, so the eigenvalues to the system are the same things as the roots of just this equation that we got right here. I just copied and pasted. So we're gonna give this thing a name, right? So since it's not exactly the same thing as the original differential equation, right? I've got primes and x's, and down here I've got lambdas and exponents, but damn, do they look similar? So we'll just call it the corresponding characteristic equation for the Diffie Q. So that is maybe some vocabulary. Just wanna make sure everybody's on the same page with going forward. A lambda squared plus B lambda plus C equals zero is the characteristic equation for the differential equation, AX double prime plus BX prime plus CX equals zero. All right, so why is this good? Well, remember, when I found eigenvalues and stuff, what did actual answers to the system look like? Well, they looked like e to the lambda t, maybe times some other stuff. So why don't we try that here too, where lambda is a root of that equation there. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug that in. We're going to sub x equals e to the lambda t into our second order differential equation and just kind of see what happens. So I hope that you can kind of follow what I'm doing with my colors there. Um, plugging in e to the lambda t for all the x's that I see. And then in this step, in the next step down here, let's do some calculus right there. So like when you take the second derivative, that just means lambda comes down twice. So there's lambda squared. When you take the first derivative, lambda just comes down once. 
you just copy paste here. I could do that. My daughter could probably do that. So here we have this more simplified version after we did all the calculus. And you see that all three of those terms on the left have a blue e to the lambda t. Why don't you factor that thing out? So what have you got? e to the lambda t times this stuff equals zero. Now one more thing about exponentials. You can't raise e to a power and ever get zero. In other words, this thing here, it's always non-zero. And why is that good? Well, that means you could divide both sides by e to the lambda t to get rid of it. So what am I saying to you? All that reduces to a lambda squared plus b lambda uh, plus c equals zero. In other words, it reduces to your characteristic equation. So why is that good? Well, I know that this is equal to zero exactly when lambda is a root of that equation. So what have we got? Yes, e to the lambda t will be a solution as long as that lambda, it's not any willy-nilly willy lambda that you picked, it's got to be a root through the characteristic equation. So what does that suggest? Well, you're looking for roots of a quadratic again. You know that there's three cases. And so what future videos we'll look at are some specific examples of each of the following three cases. And again, you get three cases out of what kind of number is underneath the square root, right? If it's already positive, then you'll get two distinct real answers. If it equals zero, in other words, if b squared actually equals 4ac, then you get a repeated uh, eigenvalue lambda. And then if all that junk underneath there is negative, then you get complex conjugate pairs, a plus bi and a minus bi. So again, we'll look at actual, uh, what do the solutions to the difficult look like in each of these three cases?